Hi, we're going to tell you about pack five for home learning in the sky for our primary learners. The pack's are all about different things that you can see and do in the sky. In English, lesson one is about the planets. You can watch the story up, up, up. There's a link in the pack on YouTube. And then using the worksheets of the planet, your adult's going to give verbal instructions to colour the planets in. If you use simple language to support your child, like get yellow, colour Venus, or colour Mars red, then your child can have a go at writing the name of the planet underneath. You could draw them if you want to, thinking about how big they are and what features they've got. Lesson two is called the moon and you're going to make moon dough and play on the moon. There's a recipe in the pack and it takes about 10 minutes to mix it up. Once the moon sand is combined, if you can get a big tray, and you can put small world toys, building blocks and characters into the sand and explore with your hands, playing with the toys and the moon sand. You can put small shiny objects in and beads that will make the sensory tray more enticing. And you, can all, all, you could also add the resources in the pack, the moon treasure and the stars, and you can bury them in the moon. Together, have a go acting out being on the moon, thinking about the different way that you would move. You could re even reenact the Apollo moon landing. Lesson three is all about hot air balloons. We've put loads of photos of hot air balloons in the pack, and you're going to look at the photos and comment on what you see. So we've provided links with some hot air balloons that you can watch as well. Um, you can use a co the commenting board to help you to model sentences with your child. For example, I see red and orange balloons. I see four hot air balloons in the sky. I see purple and black striped balloons and lots of white balloons in the sky. It's about extending their language. Okay, lesson four is also about hot air balloons. We've given you a drawing of a hot air balloon and can your child colour and label the picture? Ask them what's in the picture and get them to write their name. Remember to include your name. Can you write both of your names? Lesson five is in the sky. You're going to be thinking about the sounds in this lesson. There's some pictures and can you find the correct initial sound to go with the right picture from the sky? So for example, there's a picture of a bird and there are three sounds next to it. Can you find the B that goes with the bird? You could have a go at writing words underneath the pictures as well. And there are sound buttons that are there to help you. So with sound buttons, a dot is one letter and a line are two letters that make one sound. So for example, star has got a dot for s, a dot for t, and then a line for r, a, r, that go together to make one sound. Lesson six is all about sounds in the sky. Watch the YouTube video of different sounds from the sky. Can you identify the sounds that are made? The children could cover each sound with a counter or a penny or a raisin or whatever you have around the house. You could say the picture sound and get your child to point to it and then model full sentences for them to copy. For example, I can hear a firework in the sky. I can hear raindrops falling from the clouds in the sky. Lesson seven is all about paper aeroplanes. You can watch the Red Bull paper wings to see the world champion plane in 2015. See if you can find out how long it flew for. And there is a link in the pack. Can you follow your, can you follow the instructions in the pack to make your own paper planes? Create them and then have a competition in the garden or the local park. Can you answer questions and any more that you can think of? Questions could be, hmm, whose aeroplane went the furthest? Uh, who made the best aeroplane? Which aeroplane is better? Why? Who came first? Who came second? Who came third? Hmm, exciting. Lesson eight is let's go fly a kite. And today you're going to make kites too. There's a link in the pack, a link to Mary Poppins' let's go fly a, pipe, a, a kite. Using the paper outline of a kite below, colour it in and write your name on it. 
You can add your name, your family, and what you like and what you don't like to each quarter of the kite to make it unique to you. Then you could add some string, fly, to, fly it in the park or the garden. Lesson nine is I spy. You're going to go outside and you're going to play a game of I spy. Model looking up to the sky to find things that are interesting. This can be a commenting game rather than a phonics activity if you're not working on initial sounds yet. For example, you could say, I spy with my little eyes, something beginning with B, B, B. Oh, look, it's a bird. Or K, K, K. I can see some clouds. Uh, there's lots and lots of repetition of the phrases will reinforce the language and make the activity easier for your child. When they've grasped the concept of the game, let them be the leader and let them have a go at saying I spy with my little eyes, something beginning with, and see if you can guess um, what, they, what they're talking about. It might take a few goes before they get the right idea of it. Lesson 10 is a sky full of stars and you're going to learn signs for colours in Makaton. Watch the video on YouTube, there's a link in the pack, and there are signs for um, all of the colours in Makaton. Have a practice at the signs first, and then look at the pictures and model the colours in Makaton. You can use visual symbols to reinforce this, and, and they're provided in the pack. When you name a colour, can your child find the visual symbol and copy the sign that you show them? Can you copy the sign you show? And can you use the communication grid to scaffold their language to make their sentences a bit longer again? Okay, maths. In lesson one, you're going to learn about hot air balloons again. You're going to decorate a hot air balloon with different patterns. You could choose a repeating pattern using shapes like square circle, square circle, or square circle, triangle, square circle, triangle. Or you could challenge yourself to use tessellating shapes. They're shapes that go next to each other without leaving any gaps. We learnt about those in the last pack. Hmm, I wonder which you'll choose. Lesson two is all about um, a book that you can watch on YouTube called A Busy Day for Birds. And we put the link in the pack. You're going to think about the different ways that birds move and have a go at making an obstacle course in your living room. You could use like a cushion for the nest um, or a blue towel for the pool for the fl flamingo. Something to crawl under to be the wriggly snake. And then think about the different birds um, and the way that they move, like maybe standing on one leg or wiggling under things when you're being a snake. You could find something to stand on and jump off it, flapping your wings, swooping up and down and round. You might want to waddle like a penguin in and out of the obstacles. Whilst you're moving around your obstacle course, listen to the instructions from your adult using words like walk under the, the nest, walk around the pool, walk between the rocks and see if you can follow the instructions. I think it's going to be fun. Lesson three. Set up an obstacle course that you can either run or walk or cycle on. It could be walking, it could be on a scooter or, or a bike. Um, try and make sure you've got some things that you can weave in and out of and some that you can go between and use a stopwatch that they've asked you to think about on your phone or on a tablet or you can count if you want to and see how long it takes you to get through the obstacle course. I wonder if you can beat your time and do it even faster. Have a go. Lesson four is all about making your own bird in your story linked to a busy day for birds again. Think about the patterns that you might have on your bird's body. It might be spotty or stripy. It might have zigzags in different colours. How many wings is it going to have? How many eyes? How many beaks? How many feet? Will its feet be big or small? Narrow or wide? What sort of eggs will it lay? Giant ones or tiny ones? Will the eggs have the same pattern on as the bird or a different pattern? So we're thinking about all of that mathematical language in this lesson. We look forward to seeing your fabulous creations. Lesson five, you're going to make paper aeroplanes and fly them. Follow the instructions on the video to make your paper plane and ask an adult to help you.
the link is in the pack. Find somewhere to throw your plane and experiment with different ways to make it fly further. I wonder who's going to travel the furthest and how you're going to find out. You could use the footsteps to measure or strides or you could use a measuring tape to see who's goes the furthest. Lesson six, you're going to make clouds with paper rain chains to show information about numbers. So you might thread some paper chains onto a cloud that's got six written on it and you put six um, paper chains, paper clips in a chain going down. Or you could count the number of paper clips and thread them onto two. So it could be that you have number eight and you want to thread it into two piles. So you might want a three and a five because when you add them together, that makes eight. Or you might want to write a two digit number on your cloud and you could represent it in tens and ones. So if you've got a number like 27, under the two you could put two paper clips and under the seven you could put seven paper clips. So that's showing two tens and seven ones. I wonder what kind of chains that you're going to make. Lesson seven. When rain falls out of the sky, it makes puddles. And if it's raining today, go and splash uh, go and splash in some in your wellies and see if you can make all of the water splash out of the puddle. If it's not raining, you can make your own puddles inside. You could make puddles out of paper and write a number on it. And then you could order your puddle, puddles. You could count in twos until you get to that number. So maybe you've got number 16. You could start with zero and you could count two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, forty, sixteen jumps in the puddle until you get to it. You could have bigger numbers like ninety and you could count in tens, jumping in tens, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety until you get to that number. You could play different games, make them up. Lesson eight. You're going to ask your adult to write a number in a cloud and you're going to write addition or subtraction sentences with that. You can either count out the correct number of rain clouds to match the number, or count out the correct number to work out the answer to the number sentence. You might like to roll a dice to help you decide which numbers to use. Can you count out the correct number of raindrops on the cloud, or use three raindrops to work out simple addition and subtraction number sentences, or make two digit numbers, or you could even try multiplication. Lesson eight is all about directions. Sorry, lesson nine is all about directions. And you can use the muffin tin to give directions for a bird or an aeroplane. You can get some stickers and put them on the back of the muffin tin and put arrows on it so that the um, bird needs to jump or aeroplane needs to jump in different directions. Can you make him start and get to the finish? thinking about which kind of language you need to use, forwards, backwards, right and left. I wonder how many goes it's going to take you to get from the start to the finish. And the final lesson for maths, lesson 10, is all about sparkly numbers. Sprinkle a layer of glue at the bottom of the tray and practice writing numbers in the glitter. You might like to copy a number going over it or you might like to remember what it looks like. If you work with two or three digit numbers, you could ask an adult to tell you one of those numbers instead and you have a go at writing it like 31, 26. You can either use your finger or a tool like a, a wooden spoon or a lolly stick or a pencil. Shake the tray gently from side to side after each number and it will disappear and start again. You could also ask an adult to ask some questions that you could write the answer to, like three add two equals, or what goes with six to make 10? Or what goes with 40 to make 100? Or what's double four? Enjoy. Okay, the other creative art, uh, the other learning, we've got creative arts. So you're going to make some binoculars. You're going to make splat firework pictures, mixing colours for rainbows, and then that move and you're going to move and soar to different music. For independence, you're going to get cooking. You're going to make birds' nest cakes, rainbow pizzas, and scrambled egg clouds. Sounds delicious. In science, you're going to make a parachute and watch it fall to the ground. 
um, have a paper aeroplane challenge and then you're going to make a rocket soar up to the sky. In Understanding the World, you're going to make weather collages and talk about them and you're going to make your own weather chart too. You're going to look at different religious festivals and learn how you might celebrate and make uh, how, how you might celebrate them and then you're going to make a rainbow. In PSHE, you're going to match weather to different emotions and find things that make you feel happy and things that make you feel scared too. And you're going to match emotions to different colours. In physical development, you're going to learn different yoga poses that are all linked to the sky. Get ready. And in technology, you're going to go cloud watching with your homemade binoculars, make your own moon landscapes and then create your own space rocket and design and fly a kite. You're going to be busy, have lots of fun.